started out with Soho Road food truck, an Indian food truck, which he'll talk about. His background is accounting, so he's kind of realized that people are opening food trucks, a lot of people are opening food trucks without any financial background. They have no idea what they're doing. They're just opening food trucks and they don't know how to run them. So he came up with an idea that, you know what, we need a support group in Vancouver. We need a support, supporting business to help food trucks grow so that they don't only last three or four or five months. They can actually go to fruition and last a long time. So he has just started up a new company called Food Truck Incubator, which he'll talk about. And uh, he's got a commissary on the east side of town filling up now with a whole bunch of companies from food trucks to food carts to people that are doing the farmers markets that want to grow their business. So he's actually got a solution for everybody. So I think it's really neat. We're going to hear about his food truck, Silver Road. We're also going to hear about food, cut, food truck incubator and what that's doing for uh, food, food businesses in Vancouver. So please welcome Sarah Mun. Okay, well firstly, thank you everyone for showing up today uh, on a Tuesday and listening to us talk about something that's so important, um, definitely in our lives, um, food trucks. Um, I guess where I would start is, I mean, the last time Richard came by, or Richard came by, um, I would say a month or two ago, and he spoke to a person in our kitchen by the name of Janelle. And she owns the pie hole, so um, uh, you guys probably know her, being foodies yourselves. Um, but I mean, he came down, he took a look at our kitchen, and he thought, you know what, this is pretty cool. And then he came down and saw me at the cart, which is located in Grantham, Georgia. And he said, well, I like what you do with the kitchen. And I said, well, you haven't heard anything yet. Uh, you gotta hear about the whole system, what we're doing, I and mean, we've got this going, we've got that going. And I saw his eyes light up and he goes, you know what? Okay, we should, we should probably talk about this a little bit more. And I think this is it. I think this is the talk that we were supposed to have that day. And now I'm having it with all of you, which is great because most likely I would have just kept my head down and kept working. Um, but what we did um, through the course of the last six to eight months was put together a business um, that would work more as an incubator or, or, or a way for food carts and other food vendors to excel in what they do. Uh, I mean, we're at, we're at a point now where I think everybody needs as much help as they can get, um, especially going through the winter, and, and that's kind of what we wanted to do. So, I mean, Food Cart Incubator or Food Cart Inc., uh, what we like to call it now to, uh, to shorten the name, is, um, is something that we've been, like I said, working on for a little while. But I mean, before we go into that, let's talk about a little bit of my background. I mean, I started off as an accountant. Uh, I'm a CMA, so I'm, I, I kind of dealt more in strategy than anything else. Um, but I mean, having done that and hating it, I ended up moving on to um, the call from the city, really. I mean, I mean they, they, asked for, they asked for people who wanted to start a food cart, and what we did was we started off um, Soho Road, which is the, the first of our carts. And that was located at Granville in Georgia, and it's, and it's going really well, and we absolutely love it. Uh, but we also got a couple more licenses with that. One was Chawala, which was the Indian tea stand. Um, that's to be located at Dunsby and Hornby. And I mean, that was the second one that came in. Haven't started it yet, uh, because we understood that there was a need uh, for basically the food cart inc, or basically a, a commercial kitchen that would take care of what we were doing moving forward. Um, the third one that we got was the Tiffin truck. I mean, it sounds like a lot of carts on the go here, but I mean, like I said, I mean, the, the concept is relatively similar. The whole concept of the, my background is, I mean, we, we, I started from an accountant, pushed in the food carts, absolutely loved the idea. I also thought I would throw my hat in and become the treasurer of the Street Food Association because obviously I had so much time in my hands. Um, and then, you know, figuring out what we needed in the industry and, and figuring out whereabouts we were going, I thought, you know what? We need something different. We need the food carting community. Okay. Food carting, what is it? I mean, firstly, it's a commissary. So a normal commercial kitchen, as I was mentioned to Sheila, I believe, um, a commissary is a Vancouver Coastal Health approved kitchen. Um, what they do is, I mean, I mean they, they've, they've checked it, they've made sure that you don't have, obviously, have any pets in there. You have uh, cold storage, you have dry storage, you have adequate sinks, you have hand wash stations. I mean, that's uh, one of the, the biggest hurdles for a lot of the food carts, is finding out a commissary kitchen. So what we thought is, okay, listen, we need a commissary kitchen that's that's um, that's great, that's impeccable, that has it that has, has enough room for as many people as we can get in there. I mean, we, we came up to a couple stumbling blocks. I mean, when it came to doing a kitchen, what do we do? Either we go out and get one, so we get one for ourselves as in a restaurant and convert it over, or we take a larger building, which we did. We took a 4,500 square foot warehouse and converted it into a commercial kitchen. We've got some pictures of it here. So this is our this is our cooking a, a appliances. There's more that heads off on the other side here. There's our walk-ins, these are two 10 by 14 walk-ins. Uh, there's a dish pit. And this is basically, this whole area now is starting to fill up, uh, fill up with tenants. 
Um, so, I mean, what we thought was, okay, let's, let's, let's go big. If we're going to do it, there's tons of people, and we can't find commercial kitchens anywhere, why don't we build one? And, uh, I mean, that's kind of where we, where we focused our attention, um, I, would say, I would say, six to eight months ago. And we've been working on that ever since. Um, so now, I mean, this is what happens for each tenant. I mean, each tenant is, is, is given a workstation, they get their dry storage, and they get a shelf in, in, in the cooler. And we do this for, um, I mean, a lot of, a lot of commissary kitchens, you, you'll probably hear this, are quite expensive. So we do this for a fraction of what most people do. And, and the reason that we do it this way, well, I'm going to get that get, get to that in just a second. But I mean, before I do that, I, I thought I'd you know uh, throw a couple of shout outs. I mean, some of the people that are in our kitchen. Uh, there's the Buy Whole Vancouver, who makes absolutely delicious pies. Um, there's the Juice Box, who do juice cleanses, and they do that right out of the kitchen. Um, and then there's Cookies, of course. And this is actually a funny story because I mean, um, Alan from Cookies, of course, he used to be at the Harbor Center. And um, he got renovicted, uh, is the term that he likes to use, and he had nowhere to go. And I mean, this is when a commercial kitchen or a production kitchen comes into play. I mean, it's a place where I mean, you don't really have a storefront, but you have a place where you can continue production. Uh, and that's why he's there. And basically, it's keeping him afloat. And it's, keeping, I mean, it's, it's basically half the price of what he would normally pay anyone else. And it's basically get, getting the job done. So that's basically where, where we are in terms of our tenants at the moment. We have a couple more that are, that are jumping in. I didn't have their logos in time. Okay, so Food Cart Inc., what is it? It's a commissary kitchen, but yes, everyone has a commissary kitchen. It doesn't take much effort to do that. What else is it? It's an incubator. So uh, we understand the concept of how hard it is. I mean, uh, Jason was talking about how tough it is to, to own a food cart, and he's right. I mean, there, there's very little help out there because you know, we're basically pioneers doing what we do. Uh, nobody's done it before us. We can't copy any models. I mean, it's, I mean basically, it's sink or swim a lot of the time. Um, so what we wanted to do was create an environment where you could grow, where you could get a business that would get off the, off the ground, and, you know, a business that has a nurturing environment, um, not having a landlord breathing down your neck because he doesn't understand the industry, he doesn't understand what you're doing. So I mean, that's what we wanted, first and foremost. I mean, how do we do that, though, right? I mean, firstly, um, we understand that it's expensive, and uh, it's a seasonal business. We're not always making money. We're dying in the winter. Uh, it is tough. I mean, we pay to be there, or, you know, I mean, I'll, I'll you're lucky we love it, to be honest, because I mean, otherwise a lot of people wouldn't be there in the winter. But um, it's a tough grind, but we did it. But I mean, how do we do this better? Um, how do we understand what is going on out there? I mean, firstly, rental rates, we feel, can't be the same in the winter as they are in the summer. Um, it's, it's unsustainable. It doesn't make sense to, to, uh, to, to, to pay so much rent in the, in, when, when you're not using the kitchen, or you're not using any cooking appliances. So that kind of brought us to the second point, and this is what we were talking to Richard about before. Uh, we we de de designed a system or a, a billing software that would work in our kitchen. And I think we're the only ones that did this so far, but I mean, we're gonna be able to license the software out. And that's Commissary Connect. Um, so we, we focused a lot of our time on this, uh, and we're basically in the beta, beta tests, and, and we're, we're just about done there now. We're just gonna connect it to all of our appliances. So what does this do? Uh, it, it, it splits up your rent. So you're not, you're not paying a fixed cost all the way through. You're not paying a high rent all the way through. Uh, what it does, it gives you a base rent, which basically covers our overhead as the kitchen, kitchen operators. And then you have a variable cost. I mean, so what your variable costs are, it's an hourly rate. I mean, whatever appliance you use, you just pay for that appliance. So now, I mean, in the down seasons, you're not paying as much. And in the up seasons, obviously, you're making money, so everyone's okay. We've also capped it, so you're not paying more than market rate. And we feel that this is probably the fairest way of going about it, and it's probably going to be the standard of what other commissary kitchens would use, um, especially because we're going to link it in. Um, I mean, the system that we're using now, um, it's, it's definitely you know, applicable to other kitchens, and now, let's say you're a vendor in Vancouver, but you have an event out in Abbotsford, and you have no kitchen there. If that kitchen is operating the same software, they can just go down there and do a drop-in, like a Steve Nash gym. So that's kind of what we've been working on for the last little while. So we got Food Card Inc., we got the Commissary Connect. I mean, why are we doing this? And it's obviously um, the key to this business is having your goals aligned. The key to any business is having your goals aligned. You have to understand that, uh, I mean, when, you know, I mean, if you have a, a landlord or somebody that's making money whether you're, you're, you're doing sales or not, and they've tied you into a contract, I mean, it's difficult for you to make money at that point. Um, but, but I mean, in our case, I mean, we want each of these tenants to succeed. I mean, our job is to help these businesses grow because obviously if they're using more appliances, then obviously we get paid. So, I mean, everyone works in the same way in a sense. I mean, everybody, I mean, we're, we're trying to get them um, to be at market rate all the time because it makes sense for us. Um, so that's basically why I did those shout outs. <laughs> okay, so the better they do, the better we do. 
Um, also another advantage of having a commercial kitchen or a food carting um, is that we get to work as a collective. Now, uh, we're a small business, so we don't get to leverage uh, much of our strengths, or we don't have economies of scale in, in many cases, but we can do that when we all work together, and that's kind of what we want to do. We're kind of building an incubator where you can, you know, you, you understand where you're going, you've, you've minimized your costs, but you're also able to take advantage of working together. So, I mean, economies of scale in terms of bulk uh, purchasing for packaging, that's something that we do. Um, we have shared labor, so uh, if we have staff that obviously one of the food carts or one of the vendors cannot take on a full-time staff, but they can take a person on for an hour or two, and somebody else can take that person on for an hour or two. Now we can share that person around, and they're trained on each one, so I mean, that definitely cuts down your costs. Yeah. Uh, we also have collective marketing. I mean, we're going to, uh, I mean, Janelle from the Pie Hole is, is uh, doing a, a tasting place, I believe, in April. Uh, but I mean, that definitely brings in more people to the kitchen to see what's going on. So I mean, we understand from the food cart model that the more food carts you have in one spot, I mean, the better we do. So I mean, that's kind of something we want to bring into this type of scenario. Obviously, market research uh, I and mean, taste tests, I mean, happens all the time. I mean, Janelle's always coming with a pie, or we're always bringing out a kebab, or someone else is bringing out their juices. Or, yeah, everyone's tasting and saying, oh, what do you think of this? I mean, you've got people now that have a, a, it's an unbiased opinion, but they're definitely, I mean, it's, it's an educated opinion, right? It's a qualified opinion. So, I mean, we're bringing people together that, that are going to be able to help each other, um, and, you know, whether it comes to market research or leveraging their business, you know, connections. I mean, if somebody gets into wholesale, I mean, they're going to help somebody else get in there, because, I mean, that's kind of how we work in, the, in our kitchen. So, that's kind of the ethos that we're going for, I suppose I should say. So, I mean, we got that. We got that working as a collective. What else we got? Now we come to the third part. And this is kind of what Richard was talking about. I think this is why Richard's eyes really lit up, because he understands seeing so many food vendors or restaurants going into the industry and then going straight back out of the industry. He understands that one of the problems there is, I mean, they don't understand their numbers. Uh, I'm, I wouldn't say I'm a numbers guy per se, but I mean I definitely understand if, if you show me some numbers, I will, I will, I will understand what's going on with them. Um, so what do we do? I mean, we help them measure their success. And how do we do that? We get a full-time accountant or a bookkeeper in the kitchen. So I mean, now you have a person that's taking care of all your numbers. They get to show you what's going on, and they get to show you graphically. They show you where your revenues are, where your expenses are, how much profit you have, what your margins, what are your variances, what's going You know, I mean, we're breaking down these, the, 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 this information, which is critical for any business. I mean, we all, I mean, it's, it's fun when we talk about the food carts and how much, how much of a laugh they are. And, you know, I joke about, um, these numbers aren't real, by the way. <laughs> Uh, we, we joke about how great it is and how we go out there even though we're losing money, but I mean, they are businesses. We have employees. People have to get paid. We have to know what's going on with them. So that's kind of the third part of this incubator system is not only are we helping them minimize their costs and, 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 and share, you know, share their ideas, but we're also being able to measure their success and show them their success and show them where the weaknesses are. I mean, breaking down where their expenses lie and where their major expenses are, and then having a solution saying, yeah, listen, I mean, your, your food costs are crazy. I mean, you're, you know, you're paying way too much for chicken. We have a bulk buyer. I mean, we can, we can bring you chicken from this person. You probably, you can probably save something, right? I mean, it's, it's working as a collective. It's trying, to, it's trying to put our heads together. It's trying to get these people that have been having a tough time starting a business. It's, it's not easy. These food carts are not easy. And I'm not just talking food carts, because the food cart incubator is probably the wrong name for this. It's more like food vendor incubator. Because I mean, these people, uh, I think I put the only food cart in there, to be honest. I mean, everyone else is a vendor of some sort. Um, but I mean, the whole point of this system is, is firstly to align our goals all the way down from top to bottom, work as a collective, and help measure the success um, of the people so that they, can, that they can continue on their business. So where does that put us? Um, we started work, we started our first guard a year and a half ago. Um, we probably haven't even changed our menu once because our, our attention completely shifted over to the kitchen and the software and everything else. So our future plans, firstly, are to get those other two carts going. So get that Tiffin truck up and running at some point. Um, and get the Indian tea stand gel well up and running. Uh, but then after that, I mean, what do we do next? How do we utilize this kitchen to the best of its ability and get more cool food out there? Um, so what we thought about doing was a pop-up restaurant. So we have a mezzanine of about a thousand square feet, I believe, um, above our cooking station, above where everyone else is. And we're zoned for a 16-seat restaurant, or 16 seats um, upstairs, which we're going to be taking a look at, you know, not in, in the too distant future. And, and, and the reason that we're doing that is, I mean, it's, it kind of gives people an opportunity to take a look at whether they would want to get into that industry. I mean, it's, it's difficult when you put in so much capital, especially with a restaurant, and then, oh my god, I mean, where are the customers? 
Uh, this gives you a chance to rent a restaurant or rent the upstairs and, and use a cooking facility and use it one day a week. And if it works out well, then you may take it on two days a week or you take it on once a month. Or as you build a clientele now, I mean, it, takes, it mitigates the risk. It gets you in a uh, position now where I mean, you're, you're, you can show some numbers to, to investors, or you can show some numbers on how many people you're bringing in. And it kind of it gets a lot of the headache out of there. I mean, we have all that all that equipment there anyway. It makes sense for us to use it for the best way possible. And so that is one of our future plans. I mean, there's tons of others, but I mean, don't have time for that. I'll be at this point. So I guess at this stage of the game, I would like to say thank you for everyone here, and I would definitely like to say thank you for Richard because if it wasn't for Richard uh, coming down and, and 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 listening to what I had to say, I probably wouldn't be up here um, talking about it. Uh, but if you guys ever want to stop in um, and take a look at the place, it's at 401 Industrial Avenue. And if you want to talk to me about anything else in regards to what I've been talking today, um, you can please just contact me right there. But thank you so much.